A stock market crash and a housing crash by 62%, according to this guy. And more layoffs. Today, I read an interesting article on foxbusiness.com written by Kristen Altes, titled, Trump's post-election stock boom won't stop inevitable doom. Economist Harry Dent warns. The author of this article referenced Harry Dent as saying, and I'll quote, I can tell you one thing, bubbles never ever end well. There's no way to go from an extreme bubble and have a soft landing. Now, that's what seems to be happening right now, and we'll see. But I tell people, give it until 2025. I think the truth will be told next year, whether they can let down this bubble without causing a crash. Because I can tell you, it's never happened in history. And I can't even compare past bubbles to this bubble, given how global and pervasive it is. Here are my thoughts. Could we see a crash in 2025? Sure, anything is possible. With that said, I'm not predicting one for a couple of reasons. First, Donald Trump is a hype man. If we experience turbulence in the market, he will be fast to say whatever needs to be said to get people excited. Second, we have a Fed who has shown they are always ready to come to the rescue. Third, we have circuit breakers in place that will halt trading. Fourth, pro-business moves by Trump will likely be good for the stock market. Note I said good for the stock market. The wealthy will likely benefit while the real economy consisting of tens of millions of everyday people will not see their standard of living improve much if any. Now, Harry Dent goes on to say, and I'll quote, look at reality, look at the charts, and see how much again. I'm just talking about housing going back to 2012. That's a 62% crash in housing, which would be twice as bad as the 2008 crisis, and that was bad for most people. Here are my thoughts. I really don't see this happening. There are far too many regular people who are wanting to buy homes. Then, there are institutional investors with money to pile into housing. There are also people who aren't ready to give up their homes because they are locked into extremely low rates. They know it is unlikely that will ever happen again. The last thing I want to say is Harry Dent has been in the news for years talking about a crash that hasn't come to fruition yet. People who listened to him in the past and pulled money out of the market likely lost out on a lot of gains. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, Harry Dent has been predicting financial doom for many years, and it hasn't happened yet. However, in my opinion, it's bound to happen at some point. It probably won't matter much which political party is in power. The next commenter said, it hasn't happened yet because economists in the government see the same problems Harry Dent sees, and they print and borrow and do accounting tricks to push off the inevitable. Like an addict taking a dose on his drug to delay the withdrawal symptoms he is going to have to go through at some point. Problems are not being solved. Consequences are merely being delayed. Truly, solving them would require a willingness to suffer the consequences like an addict going through detox. Unfortunately, most people in the nation don't want to fix the problem of bad habits. They just want the government to make them feel good. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, The economist is correct. We are structurally unsound and in way too much debt. Our decline started under the Federal Reserve, and sadly, ever since we got off the gold standard, our rate of decline has accelerated massively. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Even if you don't believe we will see a crash in the stock market or the housing market, you may agree we are living during unusual times. This next story really illustrates this. I read this story on Yahoo Finance, put out by Benzinga, and written by Chris Katchy, titled, If you invest it $100 in Dogecoin when the meme coin launched, here's how much you'd have today. The author said, Dogecoin started as a joke in 2013. It was created to mock Bitcoin. If you had purchased $100 worth of Dogecoin on December 15, 2013, it would be worth 
$545.06 today. Here are my thoughts. Earlier, I said we are living during unusual times. I stick by that statement. I feel like I'm living in the alternate Biff timeline in the Back to the Future movie. In what reality would people buy something digital on a screen that isn't backed by anything? Something that doesn't own buildings, equipment, patents, something that doesn't generate earnings? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Crypto people will point to some type of utility for coins like this now or in the future. I personally think all of this reminds me of the dot-com bubble in the late 1990s. I personally would rather own tangible assets like physical gold and silver or real estate. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Here's some bad news about our labor market. I read this today on foxbusiness.com, written by Sarah Rumpf Witten and Daniela Genovese, titled, Boeing Issues Layoff Notice as Aerospace Giant Cuts 17,000 Jobs. The approximately 17,000 employees included in the cuts were notified this week and are expected to leave the company in mid-January. Well, my friends, I hate to hear about these layoffs. I hope these people have a well-funded emergency account to rely on until they can find new employment. This could take a while, depending on the occupational area that each of these people specialize in. There was another company in the news today talking about layoffs. I read this on CNBC.com, written by Kif Leswing, titled, Tech AMD to lay off 4% of workforce or about 1,000 employees. The author said, this is because the chip maker wants to gain a stronger foothold in the growing artificial intelligence chip space dominated by NVIDIA. Well, I hate to hear about more layoffs. I have to wonder how bad this layoff situation could get if we ever see a meaningful correction in the stock market. Companies looking to cut costs to remain profitable would likely put jobs on the chopping block. Many people forget what happened back in 2008. I remember watching video after video of people carrying their personal property out of their offices in cardboard boxes. I think a lot of Americans have short memories, or maybe they just block out those dark times from their memories. What do you think about these recent layoffs? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.